in this series on personal branding, building a personal brand, what a personal brand means, and of course, the effective way of going about stacking up your personal brand. Uh, today's topic is about story building, right? Storytelling. Every personal brand needs a story, just like a brand, just like a commercial brand, just like a, a business brand. Personal brands also need stories. And if you look at any one of the famous kind of personal brands out there, um, the thing that you would notice is that the power of that personal brand really comes from the way they tell their story. Now, when you're talking about brands, whether they're personal or business brands, and with reference to story, it's slightly different when it comes to personal brands as against, as opposed to business brands, right? For business brands, the origin story is not that critical, right? So, okay, just to step back a little bit, two types of storytelling in branding. You got the origin story, and then you have the brand story. The origin story is all about how that brand came into existence and how sort of it was launched and what what was the reason for its existence and, and so on and so forth. And the same goes for a personal brand, right? An origin story would be how you started and, you know, all that. And we'll go, we'll go into details of that in just a second. But let's just talk about the differences. Then you have the brand story, which is, it may have elements of the origin story, but primarily it is focused on telling a story that aligns with the target audience, their pain points, their worldview, their kind of values, their beliefs, and so on and so forth. So it's a story that you tell that aligns with your target audience, and that is called the brand story. So origin story, brand story. Now, for brands or business brands, the brand story is critical. The origin story, not so. So you could use the Pareto principle, right? 80-20 rule. So 80%, 20%. 80% for a business brand is or should be focused on the brand story. 20% should be given to the origin story. In terms of a personal brand, that kind of reverses. So 80-20 rule, 80% should be the origin story and 20% should be the kind of uh, brand story. However, as time progresses and as you become kind of, um, I wouldn't say popular, but as you become a strong personal brand, right? A brand, a, a personal brand that has brand recall. People start recognizing your personal brand and you're having the kind of impact that you wanted to have. Then you slowly start reducing the percentages or rather distributing the percentages. So 80%, 20% then become 70, 30, then 60, 40, 50, 50. So where the ideal balance is, your origin story is balanced by the brand story you tell. Okay, so that's that's the difference between origin story, brand story, and the difference between personal branding and business branding. Now, what is storytelling, right? I keep saying origin story, brand story, 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 storytelling. Now, this is a word that's being thrown around like no man's business, and I'm doing it myself, but hey, the word is there, right? I mean, that's the only word we have to communicate what we want to say. What, what is that? Right. People, um, since millennia, right, since the dawn of civilization, or even before that, actually, since the beginning of humankind, communicated through stories. And if you look at the mythologies, if you look at um, any of the big books and religion, everything is based on storytelling. In fact, the Bible is called the greatest story ever told, right? And not just, not just in Christian mythology or Christian uh, theology, if you look at other religions, the holy books, for example, in Hindu Hinduism, you got the Puranas. The Puranas are ancient texts, and um, examples are the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Gita. Or if you look at Islam, then you got the Quran. All these books, right? All these holy texts have stories that communicate fundamental principles of life, the good and bad, evil, so on and so forth. Then, after that, you have, of course, storytelling as a means of entertainment. People were telling stories to entertain each other. Imagine, right? You have these, these nomadic kind of human settlements and a group of people living together. They got this little, okay, let's start with the cave age, right? Caves, people are living in caves. And what were they doing at night? You got this fire going, uh, a bonfire in the center. People gather around it. Number one, it was to ward off kind of the, the cold of the night. 
Two, it was the word of the animals, the wild animals that might be out there attacking, trying to attack. And it was also the word of evil spirits. And those evil spirits became part of the storytelling. And people would be engrossed. And there would be one storyteller. And they usually became the shamans. And then they became the leaders. And eventually they became, of course, you know, the kind of people who were always leading a movement. It could be a religious movement. It could be a political movement. Storytelling. So we communicate to stories. And as a personal brand, you want to communicate yourself through stories. And origin story is a fundamental aspect of that. Now, let's just talk about what a story is and, and how a story is told, right? Now, each story or any story, any good story, has five kind of elements, right? Now, we're not just talking about personal stories. We're talking about just stories in general. And let's, let's start from there so that you get a good grasp of what storytelling is. So it's made up of five critical elements. The first is characters, right? Every story has characters. Um, if you look at mythology, if you look at movies right now, movies are nothing but storytelling, right? They have great characters. You have the main hero, you have the heroine. Okay, let's just call it hero, right? Hero, not just male, but a hero is someone who is central to a story, is someone who is on an adventure, right? Um, then you have the supporting kind of characters. Then you have the good characters and you have the evil characters and you have the big baddie, so on and so forth. So you got characters. Now these characters are in a setting. So the second element of any great story is a setting. So you've got the main character in a particular setting. Maybe it's a village. Maybe it's um, uh, the place, we, you know, not maybe, but where he lives in, he or she lives in, right? And you got those characters playing different parts in that setting. So a setting is quite critical. Then you have the plot. The plot is the journey of these characters. Maybe from one point to another. It could be a, a, a physical journey, a literal journey, or it could be a metaphorical journey. And usually it is a physical journey. Um, so, so the characters are moving through a journey and that becomes the plot of the story. And in that plot, you have conflict. That is the fourth element. Conflict. Without conflict, there is no emotion, right? There is no interest. Uh, in any great film, in any great story, in any great book, or in any book <laughs> for that matter, conflict is what moves the story forward. Without conflict, you sort of lose interest in that story. So if the story starts off with this character, with this hero, he or she, and they're in this village living their life, life, and, um, the story, you know, sort of describes this character then about the supporting characters, the parents maybe, the friends, the siblings, or, you know, other characters in the village and so on and so forth. And it just continues on and on and on. Would you be interested? Of course not. There, there has to be a conflict that comes into their lives. And if you look at business also, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm sort of jumping the gun here. I, I wanted to go structurally, but I can't help bring that analogy here and try to give an example. Um, even with um, sort of in your personal branding, without a conflict, you really, there's no purpose, right? Remember in one of the previous videos on this series, um, in fact, I was talking, it was actually the previous, previous video. I was talking about the fundamentals of a personal brand is, of course, you know, your kind of purpose, your, your values and your core values and your vision, mission. So that makes no sense if there is no conflict to resolve, right? And that is the fifth element of a story, resolution. So you have conflict and that needs to be resolved. So, I don't know if you're a big fan of Star Wars, maybe not, but it's the easiest example for me. It's a cliched example, so let me just use it. Why not, right? But this is in every movie. So you got, I'm, I'm going to take the first Star Wars. So back, uh, right? It was episode four and A New Hope. So you got, you got Luke, the main hero, the main character. And it's, the story starts out with his life. This guy is, I don't know, farming in this planet, um, the desert planet, right? Tatooine. And they're, I think, mist farmer. So he's living, so he's the character, he's living with his uh, uncle and aunt who become the other characters. And then eventually he meets Ben, right? Obi-Wan Kenobi, who becomes the sage in that character, right? I, I'm gonna explain all these in upcoming videos. Um, so then he has all these characters. And then the plot twist comes when he gets ha his hands on this robot and the robot has R2-D2 and then the robot has a message hidden inside and this message is played, and this is from another character, Leia, Princess Leia. And she says, oh Ben, um, I need your help. You must come. The whole 
universe depends on you or something like that, okay? I'm just paraphrasing. And thus begins the kind of conflict where this character has to resolve. He doesn't want to, but he's pushed into it. And then, of course, resolution comes when he destroys the, the Death Star. And then you got the baddie, of course. You got Darth Vader. Uh, you got, you got the Empire. And Empire is the bad thing. And, um, Darth Vader is the, the leader of that Empire dark thing. And, uh, he has got, he's the evil kind of representative. So, okay, I'm getting carried away again. That is storytelling. And let's now apply that to, to your personal branding and how you need to look at it. You need to tell your personal story with these elements in mind. And usually they would be there. You just need to identify them. And the reason you need to identify is because there are three or four more advanced concepts that will come in at the end of these five fundamental principles of storytelling. And those will make sense when I get into them. So the characters and um, sort of setting for you is you and where you came from, right? It could be It could be how you arrived at where you are in terms of your setting and in terms of what happened in your life that led to acquiring the skills that you have right now or the expertise that you have or what you're going to bring to the table. And that is the, the, the character about yourself and the setting. And of course, the why factor, why you is fundamental to your personal brand storytelling, right? Your origin story. The why factor is a part of the conflict. Uh, it's sort of the plot. The why factor is part of the plot, right? So you have the why factor. Why you? And the plot thickens as you communicate the why. And communicating the why advances the plot. And when you are communicating the why factor, then you go to the epiphany part. Because look, most people realize they have something to offer to this world after they've had an epiphany, right? An epiphany is something where you look at something and you say, oh my God, yeah, that that really makes sense. That is an epiphany, right? About yourself, about the world. Every day we have epiphanies, okay? Maybe you're watching this video and having an epiphany, right? Or you're watching a movie and you have an epiphany. Uh, yesterday, actually, uh, funnily, I was watching uh, Django Unchained, Quentin Tarantino, a movie, right? Uh, I've, I, I watched it in the past. I, I, I tend to watch Quentin Tarantino movies over and over again because I'm very interested in direction, uh, directing. Um, and I'm, I'm interested in filmmaking, but I'm also interested in storytelling, right? So, and I, and there's always business lessons and brand lessons and storytelling lessons from, from movies. And Quentin Tarantino movies, there's lots of lessons. Anyway, in Django, I was watching Django and there was a, there was a point where Django, um, is, is, um, sort of played by, um, Jamie Foxx, right? So they're heading to this, estate owned by this guy, uh, this character played by Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio, right? And you, when they're going, when they're, they're actually traveling, there's a scene where they're negotiating sort of, sort of, um, so Jamie is, Jamie Foxx's character is a, a slave, a runaway slave, and he's on this horse. And this guy is the, is, is, Leo is uh, an estate owner, right? But he talks back and he's very arrogant. This, this guy, this Jamie Foxx is very arrogant. And yet, Leo's character doesn't just get him shot or whatever. And in that moment, I had an epiphany in terms of negotiating. That's for another day, okay? Because I'm digressing here. But I just wanted to explain what an epiphany was, right? So, when you have an epiphany, when you are talking about the why factor, that is the plot of your personal branding story, right? So, the epiphany, and then you, once you have an epiphany, that turns into passion. And when you have a passion, that is part of the plot too. So you're telling about your epiphany and about the passion, the why. So why you are what you are, why you have this expertise, why you are the personal brand you are, and why people should care about you. That is the plot. Then you have the conflict. The conflict is about whatever this passion is. So the passion, half of the passion sits in the plot and half of it, it sits in the conflict stage, so to speak, because you're trying to resolve a conflict. You, that is why people should care about you. That is why they should come to you. That should, why they should listen to you maybe, or read, or, or watch, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Moving your personal brand forward. And then of course, finally, you have the resolution. How you are solving that problem. 
You see what I'm saying? And solving a problem doesn't necessarily mean that you are solving that problem or there's a problem to be solved, okay? Let me give you an example. Myself, right? I even talked about it in this previous video in this series on personal branding and in the first video. So what is my story? What is my storytelling for my personal brand? My purpose, as if you remember from the previous video, if not, just watch that video, right? My purpose is to sort of create these kind of awakened brands, right? And the vision is to really um, share or rather create this, this kind of, um, and I'm muddling it so it makes sense to you, right? I'm, 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 I'm blurring the lines, but uh, it is to have, to share my knowledge um, in helping uh, build brands. And my mission is, of course, to have a channel uh, or a set of videos or, you know, a, a, a library of resources where I can share my knowledge. And how am I doing that? Through my videos. Okay, so how is this, how is this, my personal brand storytelling uh, happening? My origin story is very important because why else would you be listening to it, right? So I've come from a background of computer science and how I started a graphic design firm and how um, at its peak, uh, when I was employing scores of people, we had, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 people. Um, and it was, it was a, yeah, it was kind of a, a design firm, so to speak. And we, our entire revenue was based on traffic from Google. And then the unthinkable happened. Google changed its algorithm and there was, there was lots of collateral damage, right? And hundreds of thousands of websites were affected and ours was one of those. And the traffic died in an instant and revenue went down to zero in an instant and we had to fire everyone and blah, 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 right? So that was, that was the plot thickening. And then I sort of rose from the ashes and I rebuilt the firm and I turned it into an agency because I had an epiphany and I had a passion. I realized what it is. And that led to kind of the conflict that I resolved. Then that became my story. And that became my storytelling technique. So that's, I started sharing because I know the elements that happened and how I overcame them. And the target audience are people maybe in a similar journey. So this is my personal branding story. So you got the origin story and then you got, uh, you know, the plot and the conflict and how I'm resolving it. I'm resolving it through these videos. This video is an example of my brand story. And my brand story is being told, my personal brand story. My origin story, yes, I speak about it. Not in every video, just these two. Now I kept saying, I said that in the previous video, but I have to, because these videos are on personal branding. I need to give you examples of personal branding and what better example than myself, right? So, but I don't really talk about this all the time. I just tell the story, which is I just share information. I keep talking about things that will help people create better brands. And that's it. That's the way I tell my story. And that is my personal branding story. Okay. I was talking about certain advanced also things after the five points, all right? And that is the point of view. A point of view is, is when you're telling a story, you have to tell it from your point of view, right? The conflict, the kind of epiphany, the anything is from your point of view. So this becomes the sixth element. And then the tone, how you tell your story, okay? My, my tone is not just how I speak, but it's, it's me. Like a lot of people say that I don't smile in my videos, right? A lot of the com uh, comments that I get and, and when I speak to people, when I, when they ask me questions, they, um, they have a question. So that a question comes in an email or something. And then there's a PS at the bottom. A lot of people say, how come you don't smile in your, in, in your uh, videos? You're, you're a little serious. But that's my tone and that's my style of delivery. This passionate talking is my style of delivery. And this is not an act. This is how I, how I speak in real life, you know, with my clients, with, with, with my friends. And the reason I don't smile is because these are serious topics. I'm not creating videos on, um, you know, just general um, life things, right? You're not here to, to, to feel pleased. Um, you're not here to feel happy, right? You're watching these videos because you want to learn something or maybe you're just interested, you're curious. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a teacher, but I'm saying that I'm sharing my information and I do smile occasionally, right? But I don't need to keep on smiling. So that's the tone. And then my visual presentation, um, the way I look and the way I talk, um, the way I communicate, you know, I, I stare, my eyes become bigger, but that's, that's part of what I do. That's how I speak every time, right? That is my style. So these are the eight fundamentals of your personal brand storytelling. What are they? You got the character, right? You got the setting, you got the plot, you got the conflict, you got the resolution. This is the fundamentals of that story. Then when you're delivering this, right? You got your point of view. 
you got your tone and you got your style. So remember these when you're now. I know this video is not about how to tell the story or what that story. This is just an introduction to you of the importance of storytelling and also clarity on what this storytelling. What, what, this thing that everybody's talking about, everybody talks about storytelling, or uh, you should tell your story, a brand story, a personal brand story, personal story, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just, I, I, I try to give a clarity into what this storytelling uh, thing is, right? In the next few videos, we will explore that uh, more when I talk about, for example, um, your goals uh, and uh, also your platforms that you need to choose in terms of telling your story uh, or putting your, uh, putting your personal brand out there, all that. So just remember that when we're talking about storytelling, this is nothing but your personal branding. So when you, oh, if you were confused about what is this personal branding thing, it's nothing but telling your story. Not just your origin story, but the story of why people should care about you, right? Okay, I'll stop here because now I'll just go into circles. Um, I hope you like this video. Uh, I know it's a little long and I've been going around maybe a little in circles, but I hope you found value in the, in the clarity of what this, this whole point is, right? Till my next video, take care.